Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm going to show you how to connect some really cool cables very quickly and easily and how to control them both procedurally and also with a fine tune like actual control of them putting them exactly where you want and they will react with your objects and this works both between multiple objects or individual objects and stuff like that just across different surfaces and things like that so let's go ahead and talk about this because this used to be behind the max on one paywall but it's not anymore and it's really cool and it's called catenary spline modifier and it's uh you know maybe not the first thing you would have thought of when you're looking to find ropes or cables uh so let's talk about how to you know just favorite that and stuff like that but yeah let's go ahead and create this and if you like this kind of short tutorial let me know uh and let me know what else you want to learn inside of c4d and redshift or other programs like unreal engine or blender i'm going to start branching out as well but again Mind Emotion uh, is available, the class below, but besides that, if you want to support me, because basically YouTube money is crap, I may make like a hundred bucks a month on YouTube, um, if you want to support me financially so I can keep making fun, cool tutorials, um, which I love to do, um, with less ads and stuff like that, then please, uh, get on my Patreon, the link for that is below, and you'll get actual, I also get access to all kinds of cool project files, and stuff like that and you can watch uh, the videos ad free there as well um but it just really helps support me a lot and then uh, i want to know what else you guys want uh from patreon and stuff um so let me know that below as well um i want to provide a service to help people and that's really what i want uh so yeah let's go ahead and dive into this tutorial and check it out okay so let's start off with like a pretty blank scene in c40 you've got just a couple of lights in here to set things up and let's talk about how to set this up very quickly and easily so the easiest most direct way to control this is to say like we'll create a null and then we'll create another null and put it over here and basically what this is going to do is this allows us to you know have points and what we're doing is we're going to use something that creates splines between whatever two points we want and so the easiest way to do this would be with nulls because you don't have to worry about setting them to render or anything. But let's, you know, let's just say we've got two points here. Totally cool. What do we want to do? Well, so all we need to do is draw a spline between these points. And the easiest way to do that is actually with the tracer. So click and hold our cloner and go down to tracer. And normally the tracer is used to like trace paths of movement and stuff and create these trails. But we're going to use the tracer to connect things. You can see our tracer already has one of the nulls in there. Let's go ahead and grab the other null and put it in there as well. And nothing's going to happen here until we set it to connect objects. Boing. And there it is. There's our line. And we can move this line just like this. Now, without having to worry about like dynamic sims, slowing down your scene and stuff, in order to create this cool kind of cable effect, actually, all we have to do now at this point is go into the asset browser, type in cat, and have the operators tab, and, you know, select it here and type in cat for the catenary spline modifier. And I highly suggest just favoriting that because obviously I don't think it's going to become pop in your mind. I want to make ropes or cables. What was that thing called? Catenary. I don't know. It's just like put in your favorite so you can find it easier because if you're smooth brain like me, you need all the help you can get. Okay. Then we just drag that into the tracer and let go. Now we've got our spline and check it out. It works, you know, dynamically with this. So now we can just set this up just like that. And yes, it goes forward, back, all that stuff. Totally fine. You know, it's a real 3D object. And we can come in here and we can adjust the amount of sag very quickly and easily. And we can have variation in our sag, which really is going to depend more on if you have multiple different things going on here. You can do the bias. You can make a sag towards one side or the other. A lot of sag talk. Uh, you also could come in here and do a fixed length. So you can actually adjust it and dial in how long you want your rope to be and stuff like that uh, if you would like. Or just use automatic, which is just the sag option there. So that's the easiest way to do it. But obviously, if you hit render on this right now, you're not going to see anything because it's a spline. So you can either put it in a sweep, uh, which is right here. Sweep and then hold alt. Put that in a sweep and put that in there with a spline like a circle spline. And put that in there. Boop. Make that really small, like two. There you go. So now you have an actual like physical object. Um, but obviously that's going to get a little render heavy if you have a lot of wires and stuff running around. So rather than using a sweep, what I like to do is just right click and go to render tags, which have to object tag. Inside of that, you can see it has a curve option here. And that only pops up when it's on a spline. So when we go to here, we're going to go to like capsules and nothing's going to happen in our viewport here. But if we do the IPR, 
you're going to see we actually have a spline and we can control the thickness of the spline just like that. Boom. And we can even like customize it. We can uh, hit control click and we can bring it down so it gets like thin in the middle. So you can really come in here and, and dial in exactly what you want. If you want to be thin on the edges and thick in the middle for whatever reason, like, I don't know, if you're doing blood veins or something and you need to control the thickness of it, you just want it to be kind of wonky or wobbly, whatever you want to do, you can, you know, create some interesting organic looks just like that. Or again, right click and just reset this. Boop. It's going to be more like that. And if you want it to be even, you just slide them both to the top. There we go. Bing, bong, boom. And that's your cable. And now we, you know, we can move that around and it's going to work. Just like that. So now let's talk about how to connect it across one object really quickly and then how to connect it uh, procedurally uh, both across this one object and how to connect two or three different objects or more objects or even like a cloner of objects um, because it's pretty straightforward and simple and a really cool effect. So let's go ahead and do that as well. All right, now let's show how to connect it with an object. So let's go ahead and just do like a torus object here. We'll bring that up. And we'll make it a little fatter and a little thinner, like so, fatter and thinner at the same time. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and all we have to do is now assign points to this object that we want our rope to connect to. So this is going to be the procedural way of connecting it. And so in order to do that, you just click and hold the cloner here. We're going to use the matrix scatter. Matrix scatter is a super powerful tool. You don't have to like use it as the cloner. You can just use it as like a random thing. So if you wanted just like a ring of points you could do this and just you know increase the radius and the pound it's like this if you wanted to do it so they are all kind of just attached to the bottom of the torus you can totally do that so with this selected uh we're going to grab our tracer and again just select the matrix scatter there boom so now you have all of these points being connected and so now that we have that matrix scatter connected you can see it's connecting all these things now if you want in our catenary we can increase the steps here or decrease the steps here and you see as you increase them it kind of like makes it lower res so it's kind of the opposite of what you would think like normally you think steps as in like um increasing the steps of a simulation and it gets more accurate this is kind of the opposite uh you want to go smaller to get more details like point one you get this nice connection across all your points almost all your points and you can increase some variation between them just like that and you can increase the sag and yes you can go beyond 100 there we go and then of course you would just attach this uh, to be right underneath your torus here there so then you can line those up just like that and then obviously just put your matrix object inside your torus and there you go so now you kind of have this cool kind of cable that's just dangling down from there but i would kind of want them to you know connect not so much in order as i do just like kind of randomly across our torus right this is obviously a really good way to um, set them up for like a telephone wire or something like that this is nice and uniform obviously a nice way if you want to do like telephone wires or something you could do it linearly instead of like in a radial effect and that's just going to instantly give you that kind of nice whoop, 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 whoop. perfect right uh, but let's go ahead and just kind of mess this up and go to the offset here and we can you know, mess with that somewhat, but the main thing is going to be the offset variation. So you can just crank that up. And that's basically just going to adjust the order in which these points are across it. So they're going to make some points that were next to each other now further along. So are they're going to try to connect across the way rather than just right next to each other. So the higher you offset that, the more like dangled they're going to be across each other. So we'll do like 1500. And now... We can go back to our catenary and increase, decrease that sag back like so, maybe kind of like that. And now we kind of have this more organic kind of just cool net of pipe there, right? Uh, so you can just kind of have this cool kind of organic hanging stuff there, which is kind of neat. So if you have that as a background, that looks pretty cool. Or if you're looking at it like this, this way, that's a really cool background as well. But rather than doing it with the, you know, radial, what if we actually just want to connect it to random points across our torus like we talked about doing? Uh, and that is if we go ahead and go to object and then we grab our torus and slap it in here. And now it's going to connect those wires for us just like that. So randomly across different points and we can switch 
to the random view here. So you can see our little squares are going to be our spawn points. And we don't want the matrix to show up. So again, we can switch that to disabled inside the redshift object tag here. And so we've got our torus here and we've got our catenary. And we can, again, we can adjust all that just like that. But if we want more ropes connecting, we can just slide up the count here. And you can see it's really fast. You can do quite a lot just like that. And you can change the seed, which is going to change where they are, obviously. And because we're using the redshift uh, render tag as the object, uh, we can go ahead and throw uh, maybe just a rubber on our torus here. And we can come in here and maybe look at this from like ben below. Add a camera real quick. Film it. Uh, put on a depth of field. Do a focus distance probably of like here's the torus. So we'll go closer than that and set the bokeh to like two. And go ahead and render this. There you go. So you can get these really cool effects. And let's go ahead and do like, um, let's do like 150. And pull zoom out here. And then we'll really dial in that focal length. Boom. And so now, you know, you can see you can create these really cool, dramatic, with more lighting and stuff. Uh, you can really change this up. But you get the idea that you can create all kinds of cool wires. And it's very fast. Like, that's a ton of cables that look like you put a bunch of dynamics on it. And modeling this in the past, you'd have to. And then cache it or make it limbic, whatever. But now it's just good to go. Very cool. Okay, let's go ahead and dial that back to like 10. But let's say I want to connect two objects. Let's grab uh, this torus here, we'll rotate it like so. And the cool thing is all the cables always hang down low, which is nice, right? Very cool. All right, so slide this over. And I want to actually just make a copy of this. Pull it over, make it smaller maybe, just to have it be different. And like so, okay? But obviously that's not, you know, connecting between the two. So how do we connect between the two? What if we, you know, if we grab the torus here, it's going to just add ropes across all the segments of our torus, which is not what we want. So how do we actually have two objects inside the one matrix scatter? Okay, and that is pretty straightforward. And that is actually just coming in here, clicking and hold the subdivision surface and going to connect. Then we put both our toruses inside the connect. And then for our matrix cloner, we just choose the connect there as our object versus just having the one torus. So using the connect, it's going to make them both be act as one object without actually having to change anything. And so now we can assign that up. And again, these react just how you want. It's just such a cool effect uh, to do all these cool wires and cables and things and doing them dynamically. Not, not purely dynamically, but the effect of it being dynamic and we can decrease the sag there. Very cool. So that's how you can connect things very quickly and easily across the same object, across two exact points, across how uh, multiple objects together. And can we throw in more objects in here? Sure. Let's connect a third one and move it over here and put that back there. Boom. So now we have three objects all connected. Yes. And yes, you could even put a cloner in here with a cloner object and it will connect across all those objects. So yeah, you can see kind of how you can make some really cool stuff very quickly and easily. So finally, we're going to go ahead into our cool kit bash scene that I've created here. And if you want kit bash, um, you can save 20% and you can buy anything now. There's not like a kit cargo exclusives anymore. So if you like a model that you see, like this mech, that used to be a cargo exclusive, you can just straight up buy the mech now. And if you want to buy some cool kit bash stuff, uh, it's just, you can save 20% with the code below and use my affiliate link that helps me out as well. There we go. So we were able to create this cool mech scene. This is obviously like the lowest settings possible, but let's go ahead and just turn off the fog so we can see um, our wires back there are all connected up to our mech, uh, which is really cool. So let's go ahead and just crank up the dome lights. So we can see everything a little easier here. There we go. You can see we've got all these wires running into our mech and I have it on the, the, the fastest you know, responsiveness uh, settings here. So that's why it looks so junky. But yeah, we've got all these cool wires heading into our mech here. And if you come in here and look at this uh, from behind here like this, they're all just kind of like running in and diving into the back of it, which is really nice. And it's just really easy to build the scene out. I built this whole scene in like five minutes because you can just drag and drop a bunch of things in there, which is really cool. But yeah, so we've got all our wires coming in here. And so the way I did that was actually just 
Uh, what I did is I used a cone. So if we turn on this on, whoops. So if we turn on constant shading, so it's a little easier on the eyes. Uh, you can see I have all these lines going in here. And what I did was I actually just used a cone. And if you, you know, take a look at this, it's just this big cone that I kind of wedged in there and the point goes to the back. And so the base is up here off frame. And then I did the same thing. I used the matrix object, I set it to vertex and gave it no height segments, basically set the one so that it's only gonna spawn points between the base of it and the tip of it. So this is gonna instantly connect from the base to the tip. And there we go. And that's how you can get that just like that. And then you throw the, um, obviously the catenary on there and the tracer with the you know, thickness value here. And you've got this really cool shot with all these cool uh, wires coming in here. And we can take our aerial lights here and maybe back it up so it can kind of shine on these little cables a bit more. And there we go. There we go. So now you can see, you know, all of our wires back there backlit by that nice orange light. And it was just like, if I wanted to model that, that would have taken forever, but I was able to do it in like 30 seconds with a cone matrix object, RS matrix and a tracer. Uh, yeah, but if you don't have the matrix, you can use like a cloner with nulls, I guess, or whatever. Octane probably has an equivalent. Um, but yeah, let me know uh, what you guys thought about this tutorial. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, huh?